Hey guys, I'm working on a, building another quail hutch just like this one right here. I want to make a grow out pin. And on my last live video, a couple of you said you wanted to see how I built this hutch. So that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Redneck video. Again, my name is Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Today I'm working on building, a, like I said, a quail hutch just like this one right here. And uh, without talking too much about it, I'm going to jump right into it, but just show you kind of a few things about this hutch, kind of how it's built. The base right here, which you can't see all of on camera right now, but it's just a, uh, it's a crate, an industrial crate. Um, that I, I get from a local place here for about five dollars and I just use it as a base for the the quail hutch just sits on it it's not actually bolted to it I've got another one that's just slightly different sized and that's what I'm gonna do but I'm gonna follow this same basic diagram my, my roof's not quite in the picture here but you'll kinda get the idea as we go along here and see how it's all put together so let me take you over real quick I'll show you what I've got done so far and we'll get started with uh, putting this thing together without too much uh, babbling on all right, so this is my uh, starting material mix here that I've got. Um, these are, what, one by fours, I think, that uh, just some scrap lumber that I had around. This is the uh, top and the bottom of the cage, so this is gonna kinda sit like this. And uh, I'm gonna give you some rough measurements on this, but it's really gonna depend a lot on, on your, you know, what you're building it to. So these are specific to the crate I'm fitting it on. These are about 33 inches long, and I think it's 32 and a half wide. A couple things you might want to keep in mind here is that hardware cloth comes in 24 inch or 36 inch. You're going to wrap it in hardware cloth so you might want to try to match that as best you can so you don't have a lot of cutting to do on the hardware cloth. So make it you know 36 inches wide or 24 inches wide. That way you can just wrap it and you don't have to worry about cutting the hardware cloth down the length of it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to accomplish that or not. We'll see what it looks like in the end. Um, these 2 by 4s are the uh, are the posts. They're going to sit like this, hold the top level of it right there, and then the roof will mount on top of these right here. And these are 39 inches long for mine because, again, it's setting on a base. If you need uh, if you need to raise this up yourself, you're going to have to make them much longer than that, of course. Um, I've cut eight of those. No, six of those, sorry. Six of those. Two of them are going to go on this, you know, one here, one there. That'll make more sense in a minute. One on the other side, one on the other side, and then one in the middle on each side to uh, hold the rafters and the roof up. And uh, what I've done is I just measured up an inch on the bottom, put three screws in. Um, so that's going to be the bottom of where my cage sits. So there'll be an inch gap between where the bottom of this 2x4 sits on the, on the crate and where the cage actually, the cage floor actually sits. One inch gap there. Um, I measured down 15 and a quarter from the top. Um, just because I matched it what my other one was. I don't remember exactly how I came up with that measurement. Um, drew a line and that'll be the top of the cage where the top of the cage sits. So what I'm going to do is just put this together. So it's pretty simple. Um, set these up on their side. I'm going to set this on here like this. Make sure I'm still on camera. Yep. Match it up to where it's uh, one inch and then I'm going to drive the screws in and uh, do the same thing on the top right there. So let me get started on that stuff and we'll, we'll show you kind of how it goes as we go. Okay, so got my main frame all put together. This is how the quail hutch is going to sit. So I'm going to go measure it on my crate over there before I go any further and make sure it all fits just right. And then I'll come back and we'll do the rest of this thing. All right, so measure that out on the crate. It fits just fine. So I went ahead and took the next step here. What I did is I marked a line right in the middle, the, the width of this. This will be the front of the hutch right here. And I marked a line right in the middle on both the top and the bottom. And then I set a 2 by 4 just on that side, from the middle line over. This will be the solid part of the hutch right here. This will all be filled in solid, and this part over here will be wire. So I wanted the bulk of the 2 by 4 to be over there because it's all going to be solid and blocked off from the wind anyway. This side being all ventilated and wire open, less, uh, less blockage over here if that makes sense. So let me, um, I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to do the same thing, put another 2 by 4 on the inside. On the other side, what this is going to do is give me somewhere for my door to close against, so it sets against the uh, two by four in the end. That's why I'm putting it on the inside of the hutch and not on the outside, so that whenever I build my doors and they fold up, they'll be able to close up against this two by four right here and not just push all the way through the hutch. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, it will as I get further along. So I'm just going to flip this over. I'm going to do the same thing, mark a center line, set my two by four right there at the edge of that over to that side. All right, so got my frame all put together and uh, 
what I managed to do is to cut out the pieces I'm going to be putting in. I'm going to be covering, you know, this is the front of the hutch right here. So I'm going to be covering this side, put a piece right there, put a piece right there. So this will be a boxed in area right here. And this side right here will be all open. Hopefully that's kind of making sense on camera there. And then my doors will be up here. So I've got these pieces, this piece, this piece, and this piece cut out. And I'll show you this real quick. This is a piece that's going to go inside here. And what I did is I cut a door out. And this is about eight inches tall. No, it's about six inches tall, eight inches wide. And it's just, uh, you can tell it's not perfect. I just kind of freehand cut it out with my, uh, um, uh, uh, whatever kind of saw that is. Uh, good grief, I can't remember all of a sudden. <laughs> but, um, Anyway, you get the idea. Freehand cut that out. You could use a coping saw if you wanted to. I've just got a power version of that, which I can't all of a sudden remember. And that's going to go right there so they'll have access between both sides of the cage. But one thing I forgot to do before I bolt these on here is the back of the cage. Um, these these uh, posts right here, this is where the rafters are going to sit. This is the top. And these need to be two inches lower than the front. Would have been way easier to cut them that way to begin with, but I forgot, made a mistake. So I'm just going to kind of flip this over, measure down two inches, and cut them off with my skill saw, and uh, should be fine. So, there we go, got my, uh, got these all cut off, so I'm just going to go ahead and start uh, mounting on my interior pieces. Got to remember which piece is which. And what I'm using here is just quarter inch plywood. I've used uh, particle board in the past and, you know, it holds up just fine, but I had to buy some wood, so I figured why not just buy actual plywood and do a good job. And that's nothing special about the way I'm doing this. I'm just going to lay it up on here. It's not perfectly square, so it's a little bit tricky for me to get in there. It's what you get when you use recycled wood sometimes. And then uh, just going to mount this on there, mount the other pieces on, and we'll go from there. All right, so I've got my uh, interior built except for the door right here. The top's just going to be wire, and then I'll probably mount. What I've done with my other hutch has worked out pretty well, is I like to have a light that goes in here, so instead of making this a solid top, I want plenty of ventilation here. I'm going to take an old feed sack and I'm just going to staple it over the top of that, and that gives that puts some give in there, so I can stick a light underneath there, and uh, it'll it'll work out pretty well. It gives ventilation and give, and those things have held up for a little over a year, year and a half. And if they go bad, I just pull them off, stick another one on. I got extra feed sacks all the time, so that's what I'm going to do for the top right here. So what I've got left here to do is to mount my rafters on. I've got these already cut out. Um, what I did is I put, I, I just measured the width between the two, the, the studs here, and then I added 10 inches. That's going to give me 6 inch overhang in the front and about 4 inch overhang in the back. So that should be plenty good. So let me get one of these here for you. I'll show you. It's not going to show up on camera very well. These are old salvaged wood. But I just measured these 10 inches longer than the width of my cage or my uh, studs here, front to back. And then I made a line 6 inches down. So that's going to mount right here in the front. So I'll do it like, I'll mark that six inch out, I'll mark it right there, and then it'll mount just like so. Before I do that though, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of door stops. What I've got is just a couple of pieces of uh, plywood that were just scrap, and I'm just going to mount those right like so, so they hang down a little bit in the front. Hopefully that's showing up on camera. That way whenever the door closes, it has something to kind of push against to stop and it doesn't just want to push through. This one here is not so bad. It'll have the stops on the sides, but the other one over there might be a little bit tricky. Anyway, it's just a little extra added thing and I'm not going to really measure this out. It doesn't really need to go all the way across. I'm just going to go ahead and just uh, kind of position it here to where it just hangs down just any and then I'm just going to screw it into place. I'm going to have to do this this direction though, so you won't be able to see probably what I'm doing. There we go. Now I've got something for the doors to kind of push against whenever they close and that'll work out pretty well. I've got to change my bit out for my other screws. Go find them real quick. 
All right, so again, just to mount these, I'm gonna mount them on the, uh, on the outside of these studs. The middle one will go. Sorry, air show going over. Let me let the plane go over first. Or planes, I guess. All right, try that again. So this one will go on this side. The other two are gonna go on the outsides of the studs. So again, what I'm gonna do is just mark my uh, six inch line right there and I'm going to set it up high enough to where when it's mounted back here that hopefully this is making sense so it's not uh, so the stud doesn't stick up above the uh, the rafter itself and then I've got that line marked at where six inches is and I'm just going to go ahead and zip a screw in there real quick there we go now I can get this all positioned and take care of it the way I want to. And there we go. Get a couple screws in the back here. That's better. Probably only need about two screws in each one of these. There we go, one rafter on, two more to go. So let me get those done. And then uh, after that, what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it. So I probably, I don't need to show painting it on screen. Um, you know, there's nothing to that. I'm just gonna get a brush and some paint and paint it up once I get the other rafter on here. So uh, once I get these rafters mounted, get it painted, I'll come back, I'll show you how I'm gonna build the doors for this thing. And uh, we're just pretty much almost done. At that point, it's just a matter of wrapping it with some hardware cloth and we're done. So let me get all this stuff done and I'll be back on camera here shortly. All right, so I got it all painted up and uh, got the door pieces all cut out. And what I did is I just took, uh, these are just one by four furring strips, a cheap, you know, dollar, I think they're $2 uh, for a six foot board. Cut them at a 45 degree angle, uh, measured them out to where, you know, that's the, that's the height. And then uh, got some for the width. I've already got them all cut out, got them painted. Got my uh, solid piece for the solid door that's going to go here. I'll frame that in. Take you over here in a second and show you how I'm going to put these doors together. The only thing I had to do, and I made a mistake earlier, uh, this board right here, I put that in there to make a door stop, but I had it flush mounted up against the top here. I had to move that door back. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. But, you know, the door is going to sit like so. And I needed to, uh, you know, I had it all mounted to where this board right here was all flush with that. I had to move it back and mount it flush with the, the edge of the frame right there so the door could, could sit in there. Otherwise, the door would have been way out here and it wouldn't have worked. Hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. All right, so these are the, uh, the pieces I cut out to frame the door in. They're just going to fit together like so. And what I've got is these, uh, these little brackets right here. They come in a package. Um, oh, you can buy them. It's like four to a package. These are three-inch uh, brackets, and these are just going to mount up in the corners like that. Put a couple screws in each one, and uh, that holds the frame together. And then this will be, let me grab this real quick. Here we go. And then this will be mounted on here like so or maybe it's like this anyway it'll be mounted on that frame like that afterwards so that it can uh can um, the part that's solid on the on the hutch itself this will be closing that up so really nothing special the way you do this you just line these things up uh, try to get them kind of squared off and then uh screw in the little screws and that's about all there is to it all right, so I got uh, one door mounted on here, and I figured I'd just come back and show you how I kind of mount these doors. My uh, chop saw is not perfect. It doesn't cut perfect 45-degree angles, so when I mounted the doors together, they don't go together perfectly square. It's not that big of a deal because, like I said, it's a uh, quail hutch, not a piece of fine furniture. But it does mean that I have to kind of uh, do some adjusting whenever I mount the doors here. So I'll bring you in close, and I'll show you kind of how I mount these. Okay, so this door I've already mounted, and it's just a couple of hinges here uh, that I put on the bottom and then a uh, barrel lock up here at the top. So I mounted that, and uh, you know it's working just great. No problems. Whenever I mount this door here, I'm going to do the same basic thing, but I've got to kind of adjust it to where it doesn't stick because it wants to, you can't see it on camera, but it's grabbing right here in the corner. So I'm just going to adjust it a little bit until I get it to where 
it sits in there right and then I'll just mount my hinges on there. Let me go get those real quick. Alright, so I've got some pretty small hinges and screws here. What I'm going to do is I just set the hinge over here close to the edge. I'm going to square it up with there, mount these two bottom ones, and then I'll adjust my door and mount the top ones wherever they need to go. So let me get those mounted real quick. And I don't want to mount these too close to the corner because it'll split this wood out if I'm not careful. In fact, I may have to get a drill bit and kind of pre-drill my holes in that. But I'm going to go ahead and get the bottom part mounted anyway. Okay, got that one mounted there. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now I've got both the bottom in these hinges mounted, so I want to just try to open this door, make sure it's where I want it, to where it's not catching on anything. I think that'll work pretty well. And then we'll just uh, see if I can screw this in there without drilling a hole. It looked like that went in pretty well, actually. And do the same thing on the other side, make sure I'm still where I need to be. And there we go. That looks like that's working pretty well. It's sticking a little bit on the side there, but not bad. Got another barrel lock. Let me go grab it. And that's going to go right up here at the top. So the way I'm going to mount this is I'm going to mount, make sure I've got it up there where it's going to be, there we go. I'm going to mount it on the door and then I'll, I'll set the top piece on wherever it fits and then I'll mount it. So hopefully that makes sense. Got a little bit of wood splitting there but I think it's alright. Should be fine. Okay now. We're fine right there. I'll put one side in and then I'll adjust the other side to make sure it fits on there just fine. There we go. And doors are mounted. That works perfect. Now I'm ready to uh, start putting some hardware cloth on this thing, wrapping around. And honestly, um, it would have been easier had I put the hardware cloth on the top before I put the rafters on, but uh, I didn't do that, so I may end up taking them off just to mount the hardware cloth on and then putting them back on. But I'm going to start with the bottom here, so I'll just show you kind of how that works. Let me flip it over on its back, or on its top, I should say. And put this up, and I'll be right back. All right, so getting this uh, hardware cloth mounted on the cage itself, I've already kind of started on this. What I did is I just I cut it down to size a little bit, and it looks like, I don't know if you can see that from that side of the camera or not, but it overhangs a little bit on the back side, so I'm going to have to probably go back through and cut some of that off. Um, but it, nothing special here. I'm using staples to mount this onto the, to the, uh, to the board itself. I just kind of lined it up, stretched out across, started putting staples in about every sixth or seventh one. I'm going to show you how I get around these legs right here because I'm going to have to cut this uh, wire. What I'll do is I'll just go up right next to the wire and I'm going to leave this section back here uncut and uh, just kind of make a hole basically for the leg to go through. So I'll go through and cut uh, the edges here. There we go. And I'm going to cut, um, let's see, how do I want to do this? I'm going to cut right here on the top side of it so that whenever I push this down through, the wire sticks up. Hopefully that'll make sense, but it will here in just a second. So let me get that done real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. There we go. Now I'm going to put a couple staples right in here to kind of hold that in place. And maybe one on the side right here to hold it in place. And a couple of these 
you know, when I'm putting pressure on it like that, they don't always go in all the way. So I come back through with a hammer and just kind of knock them back into place where they need to be. That should be good. All right, so I got the whole thing, wire on the whole thing. I did end up taking off two of these rafters, put that on there, because when you're wrestling that wire over there, it's just easier to, to come down from the top, if that makes sense, without the rafter being in the way, not having to fish it through the rafter. So I took these two off, laid it down, and then uh, you know it's just finished off right over here. So pretty simple, really. Doors on, everything. It's time to go ahead and put the roof on. Um, you could use a sheet of plywood and shingle that if you wanted to. I've got all this extra sheet metal that's just scrap sheet metal I got off of a project. So I'm going to use a sheet metal and I'm just going to mount it on there with some uh, some roofing screws that you know have a little bit of a, a washer in them. Hopefully that's showing up on camera have a washer on them like that. So that's what I'm going to use to mount these on there. Pretty simple process. Just going to go ahead and get this situated where I want it. And then uh, there we go. And I'll put a couple down this side, a couple down the other rafter, mount the other one on top of it, and uh, go all the way across. Where's my screws? There we go. Alright, that should do the trick. And I think we're good to go. I'm going to go get this thing mounted up there and then we'll uh, take a look at what it looks like once it's all mounted up. Alright, so I got the roof mounted on there, got it mounted on the uh, pedestal that it's sitting on. I'm going to come back through, I don't know if this is showing up on video, but I'm going to come back through with my skill saw, cut this off so this is just open right underneath, and I'll be able to get in there and shovel the uh, the droppings out whenever I go to clean this thing out. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much done. The only thing i got to do is add a watering system to this, and I'm going to add that very similar to the way I have my other hutches set up. If you've been watching my videos, you know how that's set up. Um, Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had several people ask me to put this together whenever I went to building my hutch, so that's what I did. Hopefully it uh, helps you out a little bit. I know I didn't give specific measurements because it kind of depended a little bit on you know, the size of what you're going to stand it on. Again, I do want to reiterate, if you're just building from scratch, you're going to build it on legs instead of setting it on a pedestal like I did, then you might want to go 36 inches wide or 24 inches wide because that's the uh, size that hardware cloth comes in. You won't have to cut down the length of the hardware cloth, which I ended up having to do here, and it's a huge pain. But anyway, hopefully that helps you guys out. Thank you so much for watching this video, and as always, God bless.